Look at this. This is a different kind of technology that will work in all sorts of kinds of light. Tonight we're leaving to Rwanda, to the Agahoso Shalom Youth Village, where we're going to install the first kilowatt of solar power. The atmosphere in Rwanda is different than in these other countries. Being under the equator and being in the African dust belt, we really don't know exactly what to expect. It's a thin film and we're about to learn how to use it. So you will lay the panels out such that these plugs are all at the same end. Yeah. And then you will connect the panels together, one to the other, using the female and male connectors. So you just make a series. Exactly. It's all in a series. exactly. I can't believe it, I'm so excited. We thought the best place to start in Africa would be in Rwanda, 18 years after the, the genocide. Rwanda has a uh, unique and deeply tragic history. And yet, it's a history that we, the Jewish people, can understand. A friend of mine, a real hero, a real innovator, built a youth village, the Agahozo Shalom Youth Village in Rwanda. I'm sure that Yossi heard about what I was doing. I certainly heard about what he was doing. I am Anne Heyman. I'm the founder of the Agahozo Shalom Youth Village in Rwanda. What you are talking about? It was really the connection between Holocaust, genocide, orphans, and I don't understand why we can't learn from each other in this world. Now, who can give me an example of uh... We need to put these kids in an environment where they're given a value system, where they're given support, where they're given education. So every country has what? Yes. Currency. I went to Israel to see if there was a model to follow. She took Israeli innovation in how do you raise a generation of orphans and has brought that model to Rwanda. It's a very expensive model. This technology doesn't only work on direct sunlight, but it also works when there's clouds. Everybody has to help. And we're gonna unroll it to the other side. It made sense to connect what he was doing with what I was doing. And Yoshi said, you know, I'm working on bringing these solar farms to Africa, and what do you think? And that was the beginning of a beautiful thing. We're gonna take off the covering paper. What we're doing is just opening up the world of the potential of solar power to Agahoza Shalom and the students. There's going to be multiple blue collar jobs created because of that, as well as high tech jobs. And I think just simply exposure to a project of this scale is going to hopefully propel them to places in their life that they, they didn't even imagine when they first arrived here. We looked at 75 markets around the world, which is half the planet that doesn't yet have commercial solar power. There are 1.6 billion people on the planet today without electricity. 1.6 billion, I mean, I can't even, I can't picture that. You look at the hungriest people on the planet, it's the same people. You look at the ones who have, don't have clean water, it's the same people, all preventable. This is all preventable. The government has asked us to build the solar field. It will supply about 10% of your entire country's energy. We did all the feasibilities, the environmental, the soil sample, the grid study, which is complicated, and we're going into final negotiations. This area is where the panels will be facing. Not only is this site here going to be the first solar PV site in Rwanda, but specifically in the East African region and in Sub-Saharan Africa in general. You know, we'll start with this one. You want to you want to peel it off? For an innovator like Yosef to come to Rwanda and employ a technology that has been used before, but do it here, where no one else has tried to do it, that is innovation. This is the model for development projects. Let's build a solar field that will generate income to build a village. What we do here in Agahaz Shalom, it's much more transformative to changing the world. I think all innovators fail, myself many times included. But uh, this storyline cannot fail. We're gonna build the solar field, and then hopefully a hundred, and then maybe a thousand, and then Africa is gonna look different. I'm already the luckiest guy on the planet. I am. I a great family. I'm part of a people that's always been part of progressive social movements. 
I don't know what the future will bring, but what I know that what I'm doing now, I feel is just an incredible privilege. And I have incredible people that I've partnered with and that my family supports me in these, you know, quixotic quests that somehow still manage to move forward. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh, all around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. I like to be a catalyst. I want to show people it's possible. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. <laughs> Yosef's team and the Rwandan government are in final talks. Now, if all goes well, the field will be finished by the end of the year, providing 8% of Rwanda's energy. Also in the works, fields in Romania, Haiti, and a dozen other countries. You see, Yosef is an entrepreneur, an educator, an activist, and perhaps now the innovator who sparked a solar revolution. That's what earns him a spot on the next list. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. We'll see you back next week.